The Guardian, which is a major left-wing newspaper in the UK, they have this morning on their front page a reference to unborn babies, using that phrase, unborn babies, on the front page of The Guardian. And Right to Life is, understandably, celebrating the fact that this left-wing news organization has finally decided to use humanizing language about the unborn, because that's very unusual. You, you never hear the phrase or read the phrase unborn babies in the left-wing media. The headline is, Unborn Babies Exposed to Toxic Air Pollution. And the article is all about how unborn babies are affected by air pollution. So you see, when polluting, when pollution is harming unborn babies, then they're unborn babies. But when abortionists are doing the harming, when it's an abortion drug doing the polluting, well, then they're fetuses again. In other words, they're babies when it's politically expedient for them to be babies, and they're fetuses when it's politically expedient for them to be fetuses. So this is not an improvement. I'm afraid to say. This, in fact, is a really stark example of the problem where we grant unborn humans personhood based on what's most convenient for us. So it's not even, we can't even really say that the, the pro abortion side has dehumanized the unborn. That actually would be too consistent. In a way, we give them too much credit when we, when we say that. Because that would seem to imply that they have some, they, they, that they at least have some sort of consistent narrative about what the unborn child actually is, but they don't. They, the whether or not the being in the womb as a person really just depends on politics, on convenience. It just depends. It really depends. So when you ask, well, where do you draw the line? You know, when is the baby a person? The answer is, they don't draw the line anywhere. What they would ask you is, well, what's the situation? So that humanity, um, the very definition of what constitutes a person is, is now situational. And this provides a transition into the topic I want to discuss to begin with, because The Guardian has another story, only in this, and this is a good example, in this headline, the babies were fetuses again. Here's the headline. More than 2,000 fetal remains found at home of former Indiana abortion doctor. Now, the media, the leftist media, has given as little attention to this story as they can possibly get away with. Uh, they have had to at least mention it because it's too big to completely ignore. So they mention it, they do their article, they did, you know, and, and they do their little segment on it, and then they move on quickly, and that's what they've, that's what they've done. Uh, but it is a big story. An abortionist named uh, Ulrich Klopfer recently died, and it was discovered after his death that he had the medically preserved, quote-unquote, bodies of over 2,000 aborted babies in his home in Indiana. He had these, these trophies in his home. 2,000, I think about 2,000 in his home. LifeSite News has, but this is, now, in that case, they're fetuses. Because the Guardian is never going to say, oh, he's, he had the remains of 2,000 babies. Because if you do that, well, now that just sounds, that, that makes abortion sound horrifying. That makes abortionists sound like serial killers, which they are. But, uh, but the Guardian, Guardian's not going to. So all, so, so all of a sudden, they're, they're back to being fetuses there. LifeSite News has more, um, uh, more information about this lovely man and the crimes he committed says the bodies of 2,246 aborted babies were found in the home of a recently deceased abortionist who previously operated in 2020 Democrat contender Mayor Pete Buttigieg's uh, South Bend, Indiana. Abortionist Dr. Ulrich Klopfer committed abortions at the Women's Pavilion in South Bend, Indiana, home to the University of Notre Dame, um, and at other Indiana facilities with his medical li when, until his medical license was suspended in 2016. As the watchdog group, watchdog group Operation Rescue has extensively documented Klopfer had a history of abuses, including failing to report statutory rape of a 13-year-old and a 10-year-old. He sent the latter home with her parents, who knew their daughter was raped by her uncle, but didn't want him prosecuted. And they didn't report it to the police. A Klopfer is far from the only abortionist to do this. This is very common. Why would this disgusting freak of a person have... 2,000 dead children preserved in his home. Well, because he was a serial killer. And this is what serial killers do. 
And this is why, as I said, this is why the media has just glanced at this story and moved on as fast as they possibly could. Because it brings to light a really uncomfortable fact and it raises uncomfortable questions about the psychology of people who go into the business of killing babies. And this guy isn't the only one, all right? This isn't, this isn't one case. Gosnell, you may remember, had a bunch of trophies um, that he kept, uh, mainly the, the, the hands and feet of, aborted, of, his, uh, of his victims. He kept in jars and so on in, in his office, in his home. Again, why? Why would he do this? For the same reason any serial killer does it. I say this raises uncomfortable questions for the pro-abortion side. Of course, it raises many questions, but one of them is, is it really possible for someone to get into the business of abortion? To do this every day, to butcher babies every day, and not end up a, a deeply disturbed and deranged person? Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.